What's up guys, Tim Little. Welcome back to Tactical Bassin. Today's video, we are talking about finesse techniques. Three techniques that I have total confidence in that will help you catch more bass during this fall transition. Last video, I talked about reaction, reaction, reaction. Today's video, let's talk finesse. Let's go. So last video, I talked about the fall transition, how fish are going to start to move, how bait fish are going to start to move, and I really emphasized reaction baits, square bills, deep cranks, flutter spoon, tail spins, top water. Well, I kind of felt bad because I left out finesse tactics. Now, quite honestly, I went fishing yesterday and I was throwing reaction. I was cranking, I was throwing a square bill, I was throwing a whopper plopper, a walking bait, and a jig, hopping a jig, a big heavy jig. And my buddy Wes was fishing behind me, slow, with a drop shot, and really picking up fish that I wasn't picking. You know, I caught fish, but uh, he definitely caught fish behind me that weren't reacting to the reaction baits. And, you know, we, we did that video, what is it, Wednesday, a couple days ago, and uh, just kind of felt bad. I, I felt like I left the finesse guys hanging because you can have a lot of fun this time of the year out with a spinning rod, out with a light bait casting rod, throwing finesse baits and catching lots of fish. You know, we really talked about those offshore fish, keying in on bait balls. We talked about the shallow fish, finding that hard cover, that hard structure once that grass that uh, you were catching them in all summer starts dying back. We talked about how those fish pull to those hard spots and how to really pick them apart with a square bill and reaction baits. Well, you can also pick them apart with finesse baits. So today's video, I got three techniques that I really want to share with you guys because honestly, I always have them in my rod locker. I start with reaction, just like I said on Wednesday's video, reaction, reaction, reaction. But I always have these baits with me because honestly, that river current is not always going to be on, right? That dam current's not always going to be pumping. The right weather conditions, the right barometric pressure, sometimes the odds are not in your favor, and that is when you can still catch them slowing down and finesse fishing. So the first technique, and I got a tip for you, the first technique I want to talk about is the drop shot because honestly it is... Ooh, we got some wind coming. Of course, we got rain and thunder. Hopefully, I'll film through it last time after the video. By the time I got to the ramp, it was dumping. So I'm going to go through this video real quick. So uh, if it rains, it rains. We'll get soaked together, but uh, a drop shot. So a drop shot is so universal. It could be fished very, very finessey on three, four, five pound line. It could be power shotted on straight braid through the thick grass. But a drop shot, you know, we're talking about that fall transition. We're talking about those fish that are following those bait balls, that are corralling those fish in the backs of cuts, out off of long tapering points. And a drop shot, depending on how you rig it, can really put a lot of fish in the boat when they won't come up to eat a frog, when they won't come up to eat a square bill. Uh, you can slow down and really pick a apart that sparse grass, and you can really pick, pick apart that offshore structure with a drop shot. So starting with, with the drop shot, again, I said I had some tips for you, and I do. Uh, I typically have two different drop shots rigged up. As you can see right here, I have a nose hook exposed point, and right here I have a weedless version. Um, that is what I'm going to fish shallow in the grass. This guy right here is what I'm going to fish offshore or around that sparse dying grass uh, and that structure. You know, those laydowns. Anything that I don't feel like I'm going to get hung up, with, uh, hung up in, I'm going to go with that exposed hook. That's a one-aught mosquito hook right there. And this bait, uh, another tip for you. When I am fishing this time of the year, I really like throwing some kind of swim bait as my drop shot bait. Remember, we're trying to mimic match the hats, right? We're trying to mimic those shad. So this is that four inch Kitek. One of my favorite baits to drop shot this time of the year. Again, those fish are keen on shad. They're keen on those bait fish. And you can really 
uh, get just very, very universal. I mean, there's so many different ways to fish it. You can fish it, you can fish it vertically, right? You're, uh, you're using your electronics. You see that bait ball. You see the fish down there. You can drop it straight down. Uh, you can fish it slow through the structure. But one way I really like to fish it is drop it straight through that bait ball and fish it up off the bottom, suspend it just below the bait ball to make my bait stand out. Oh, hopefully everybody's all right. But again, a swim bait, you're trying to mimic those shad. So this time of the year, get yourself some soft swim baits. I got a couple favorites for you. That's the four inch easy shiner. Here's the three inch. If, you're, if your bait is really small in your body of water, here's the three inch and the four inch. Another great one is gonna be this guy right here. This is the Damiki Armor Shad. These two, this is the three inch. I, I really like the four inch just because I got a larger presentation. If I have to downsize, I will. But this is a three inch. You can see how it's got the, the paddle tail. So as that bait is working in the water, as that bait is falling down, that tail's kicking, it is swimming. It is a swim bait on a drop shot. And this guy right here, he's got the little fork tail, a little more action. With all of these presentations I'm gonna talk about today, remember you're gonna work these more aggressively and quicker than you normally would the rest of the year. It's warmer water, the fish are more aggressive, they're really very active, so fish these things a little bit faster than you would normally fish. You know, for instance, if I'm fishing a Texas rig drop shot, uh, you know, I talked about the swim bait, now let's talk about this guy right here. If I'm fishing a weedless drop shot, where I am going to fish this, I'm gonna fish this shallow. When I talked about those grass patches, I'm gonna fish all of those weed edges, those real healthy grass patches, I'm gonna fish this guy right here. This is a six inch robo worm in Margarita Mutilator. If you can have one color throughout the country, I don't care if you're pond fishing, bank fishing, uh, out the California Delta or down in Florida, Margarita Mutilator 3 is a phenomenal color and it's a must have. It's my number one go-to color. Uh, I will link that down below in the video description. But as you can see, I have this rigged weedless. So I can fish this right around that grass. You know, those fish are congregated up in that grass patch. Now I can fish this 12 pound fluorocarbon drop shot down through that grass around those edges and just shake it. You know, those fish might not want to commit to a square bill, might not want to come up to a frog, but have a Texas rig drop shot on to fish around that same stuff. If you guys are going offshore, go with the nose hook. You know, you got that more, you got that exposed hook, you get better hook penetration uh, before you actually feel the bite. A lot of times the fish hook themselves, but try to fish a swim bait as your drop shot bait. All right, rain is coming, here we go. This this Tennessee weather, I mean, I swear it changes every like five and a half minutes. It's crazy. But next bait that I want to talk about, let's talk shallow again, is gonna be a weightless Senko. One of the one of the first memories that comes to thought was a tournament I was fishing on Clear Lake many, many years ago, and uh, we were up in the cheese, up in the grass mats, and in the little pockets there was crystal clear water. And how we won that tournament. Uh, was flipping little five inch Senkos weedless. Again, Texas rigged, right? You're around, around grass. So find those spots and flip that bait in there and just let it fall. Let that very subtle, uh, whoo, there's the rain. If I have to, I'll pull the mic guys and uh, we'll move locations. But uh, let's see how it goes. Has it been five and a half minutes yet? Because I feel like it's changed. Again, flipping this bait in those little isolated clear water pockets and just letting it fall. Letting a Senko do its thing. That real slow, subtle presentation really gets those finicky fish that don't want to commit to eat the bait. Now, one thing with all these techniques is they don't you don't have to fish them on a spinning rod. You can fish them on a bait caster. So when you guys see this title or you see the thumbnail and you think finesse baits and spinning rod, it doesn't necessarily have to be that. You can throw a bait caster for a drop shot. You can throw a bait caster for a, a Senko and for the next technique I'm gonna talk about. So I will link some of my favorite combos down below in the video description. But next time you guys are out, 
and you are throwing reaction and they're not committing, tie on a weightless Senko shallow. Now, typically I don't fish this deep unless I'm around schooling fish uh, that have turned off. Like if I have a, a, a bait ball and I have fish that are offshore, say they're hanging around a, a houseboat or a floating campsite, something like that, a weightless Senko wacky rigged works awesome. Fire that thing out there and just let it fall. It's going to fall down through those bait fish and just mimic a dying shad and boom, you're going to get bit. One of my favorite baits to throw, uh, obviously this color right here, didn't really talk about it, but this color right here is called natural shad. Again, you're mimicking bait fish. If you want some kind of baby bass color, go with a baby bass color. Uh, I do always take a sharpie and and uh and color the tip of my baby bass senko black just the just the last like half inch or three quarters of an inch or so it just really mimics uh a baby bass little tip for you on the senko you guys that do not have shad in your fishery i know we talked about it in the last video we talked about crawdads check out this color right here this is my favorite bottom fishing color if i'm fishing if i'm not fishing electric shad on a nico rig but i'm fishing a cinco down deep on the bottom or near the bottom i go with this color right here this is 956 i will read you the color but just remember 956 it is a must have color if you are around crawdads it is 956 but it's called watermelon with copper orange with red flake 956 so we talked about drop shot, we talked about a Senko, and we've talked about please don't rain. <laughs> it just messes everything up with the microphone and everything. So the last technique, again, try and keep it a little bit shorter, is going to be a shaky head. How, how can you talk about offshore fishing, this time of the year fishing, without talking about a shaky head? Now, again, you're going to fish this more aggressively than you normally would. This is that net, net bait, this is that T-Mac in uh, sun perch color. Very, very good color. Another must have is gonna be June bug. One of those two colors is typically what I start with. So the benefit of throwing a shaky head, again, you're fishing down on the bottom, so now you're fishing more of that deeper water. Yes, you can fish this around grass. Uh, it works. I think the Senko and the drop shot will work better but it definitely works. Um, if you want to fish a worm around grass, try swimming a worm like a Texas rigged, uh, like a lightweight eighth ounce, quarter ounce worm and swim through the grass, but that'll be a different video. Shaky head. I like to fish this very, very aggressive. Again, you're fishing for those offshore fish. You're fishing that rock pile, that structure, those lay, lay downs as, that, as those fish move out of those coves and go for that hard structure. A weedless shaky head is going to be the third rod that I always have tied on. I always have a drop shot tied on. The two differences, depending if I'm fishing shallow or deep, the Senko, if I want to flip grass, flip under trees, flip that hard structure and be weedless or go deep with the shaky head. Again, you're going to fish this very aggressive. Hop, hop, let it fall. Hop, hop, let it fall. Drag, hop it up off bottom. All of these techniques, the Senko, the drop shot, when you're around, ooh, blow up, when you're around grass patches like this and you're flipping the edges, flip it in there, let it fall, shake, 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 move on. Again, those fish are going to be aggressive. If they're there, they're going to be on it. Don't sit there and just soak the worm. This is not the time of the year to be doing that. Same thing with the shaky head. Fire it out there to your favorite offshore rock pile, your offshore structure, dock piling, whatever it may be. Fire it out there, let it hit bottom, lift up, check your rod tip to see if there's a load there. A lot of times they will eat it on that initial drop. If not, hop, hop, work it down, hop, hop, work it down. As you, as you come off that structure and you don't get bit, move on. Move very quickly this time of the year because, again, those fish are moving quickly as well. You guys, if you have any questions, <laughs> please leave them down below in the comment section. Uh, I will try to get to those as soon as possible, but this time of the year, I always start with reaction. 
and if I cannot force feed them reaction and I am struggling and the guy behind me is picking them off with a drop shot or a Senko, don't be, don't be a stubborn guys. Grab the finesse stuff and you will catch more fish this time of the year. The drop shot, the shaky head, the Senko. If you guys have any questions, please, again, leave those down below in the comment section. I will get to those. As always, guys, we appreciate you. If you like this video, hit that thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel. We'll talk to you soon. Have a good one. Super cool.